Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. My name is Sean Walsh, founder of Cali Barbecue and Cali Barbecue Media. I want to give a special shout out to Toast, our primary technology partner for believing in restaurants, for believing in this show, for believing in the power of online storytelling. Today, we have a very special guest, a close friend. His name is David Rev Ciancio. You can find him at Rev Ciancio. R-E-V-C-I-A-N-C-I-O. You can find him on Instagram, over 100,000 followers on IG, LinkedIn, 7,000 followers, 4,000 followers on Twitter, TikTok, 2,000 followers. He's also at The Munch Mafia and at Fun With Fries, which has over 330,000 followers on Instagram. This man is a walking smartphone <laughs> storyteller. Super fired up to have Rev on the show. Rev, welcome. Thank you. I just got an upgrade. I had the iPhone 12 mini because I'm one of those people that like, I did not want a phablet. Like I did not <laughs> want a movie theater in my back pocket. I don't want yes. that. I don't want my pants to sag because yep. of my phone. So I, last time I bought one two years ago, I had the iPhone 12 mini. Well, at the time on Instagram, I was doing mostly photos. So like for me to create content for Instagram was like, bang, 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 edit photo, three sentences, hashtags out. Right. Yes. Like I could do five or six posts in like an hour. No problem. Now with TikTok and reels, I'm staring at my phone for an hour or two, just editing like one post. And like yes. my eyes were starting to hurt. Right. Now I'm this guy. So oh, I, can't, look at that. I can't look at my phone without the glasses. Now he's got the glasses. And with the iPhone 12 mini, like my eyes were hurting after an hour of editing TikToks. So um, I'm in the big one. And I do, I do have a post coming about the upside down phone club. Uh, oh, I like it. There I'm going go. to actually do like a whole thing. Like, here's the difference between the two. Like, perfect. I love it. Well, uh, I, so in life, in the restaurant business and in the new creator economy, we learn through lessons and stories and really excited for today's episode because um, I've had the fortune of interviewing Rev for uh, Digital Hospitality. That's our other podcast, but there's very few people in the hospitality space and marketing space that actually walk the walk. A lot of people talk the talk, but not many people walk the walk. And Rev is one of those people um, that actually understands all of the principles, all the things that the deep thesis that we have on this show is to, to help restaurant owners, to help the hospitality professionals understand that the creator economy is here. You are already all creators. And what is so amazing is that we have the technology at our fingertips to share that story online. But I'm going to start with our favorite random question for you, uh, Rev, and that's where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? Oh, man, that is a good question. I don't have one answer. That's the problem. Because, like, have you ever been to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh? Man, that is an I awesome haven't, not place. Yet. That is an awesome place to see a baseball game. It's downtown. All the buildings are around you. And when if you're there in the summer, which was when most baseball games happen, um, the the sun sets during the game so the sun sets behind pittsburgh and then you have this beautiful like cityscape around you and you that, know is that heinz field or three rivers or three rivers sorry heinz three is rivers. The okay field. perfect sorry okay. yeah three no, rivers. i'm just making sure yeah, yeah i'm but not three rivers <laughs> but, <laughs> that's uh, fine but that's a cool and then you can eat Pramonti brothers and you can eat like you know uh what's the wing place they have there a quaker steak and lube so like I that have, that's, i haven't been it's on my list to make it to pittsburgh to to see something that's a good one. Also, uh, where the Tigers play, Comerica Park is pretty awesome. It's one of the very first like new parks. You know, it's not like those old stadiums. It's like, and if you go there and you're a Tigers fan, it's sick because the 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 regular like the concourse level from one end to the other is a Detroit Tigers museum. Every really? single section is just yeah. like memorabilia, and it's done by decade. So like the '50s Tigers, the '60s, it's like so pretty cool stuff. I mean, you have to kind of be a baseball nerd to like that, but. Those are probably my two favorites. I got uh, Yankee Stadium is cool, but it's a little boring to be honest. Like it's so corporate, you know. Well, we're going to go to Three Rivers and what we're going to do is we're going to convince entrepreneur, convince Toast, um, talk to Davo, talk to the guys at Branded and tell them that we're going to put on this uh, a TED type hospitality event. So I'm talking about a new new type of conference, not something where there's a panel where everyone's standing up there <laughs> asking questions, not something where it's a typical trade show. Um, as somebody that is on the trade show circuit that speaks at all of the best hospitality conferences around the world, I want you you to, to we're going to go to three rivers and I'm going to put you on the diamond. I'm going to say, Rev, 
let this stadium know all of these people that are coming, the people that are playing the game within the game, the people that are listening to this show, the people that want to level up, who are you? How did you get to where you are and where, where are you going? Uh, somewhere in my archive, I'll have to find this and send it to you. I was once at City Field where the Mets play and somebody gave me the microphone. <laughs> That's not a surprise. If you, if the more you learn about Rev, the, the stories that he has are, are legendary and epic. So go, go for it. Tell me, tell me. I, about, you have the I, microphone I would just now. send, I'll just send you the video. You can link it up in the show notes. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> it was definitely one of those things that like half the people that heard my voice were like, that was hilarious. And half the other people were like, please take the mic away from him. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Good times, man. So who are you? Who are you and what do you do for the for the audience that doesn't know the the people that are first getting introduced to Rev? Sure, I'm a hospitality marketing consultant. Uh, I have two types of clients. So half my clients are you know multi unit or large independent operator restaurants, and I help them to make technology decisions, and I help them to stand up, create, and run scalable guest acquisition and retention marketing. So. You know, what us demand gen marketers might call, you know, de demand gen, but that's not what restaurants call. So we call it new guest acquisition and retention. The other half of my clients are hospitality solutions providers. So people that sell technologies or other solutions to restaurants. And so I become not really like a mediator, but I speak both sides of the, the, the table. You know, so I understand why the tech is valuable. I'm a tech enthusiast. I think you are too. And I help restaurants to better understand how to use that tech. Now, additionally, I'm also a restaurant operator. So I own a small uh, quick service hamburger shop in New York City. So I'm I'm an operator, I'm a marketer, I'm an owner, I'm, I'm all the things. Now, if you ask my mom, what do I do for a living? She might tell you I put pictures of pizza on the internet and she's not entirely wrong. That is true. So let's talk about <laughs> pictures of pizza on the internet because I think that is, you know, so much of the intersection of of how you and I have met and uh, the things that we care deeply about is is technology and storytelling, um, and in the hospitality space. So when you're talking about your evolution of social media, because I want to talk to the people that are inspired, you know, so much of what we talk about is it's not just the job of the social media manager. It is not just the job of the social media agency. It is everyone's job to be an online storyteller, to be an online publisher, to be their own media company. But it takes the courage of making a lot of really bad pictures of pizza and a lot of really bad pictures of French fries to get to the point where you can build a community understand a platform and then that platform changes when you go from instagram being a photo first platform to now being something where you literally only post reels um the world evolves can you bring us into your smartphone storytelling journey uh if i can i share screen in this sure, absolutely sure. yeah you can right. share a screen I want to. I want to show yeah, you. For, guys those, for those of you that are watching on on entrepreneur on youtube you get the the benefits of the shared <laughs> screen Okay, so I'm trying. It's going to take me a second to find it. That's right? fine. That's but, fine. Uh, prior to social media was blogging, and I was a blogger before I was a social media person, right? And so I ran this blog called. Oh, I, of course, I can't find it. Hold on. Um, I ran a blog called Burger Conquest, right? And Burger Conquest uh, was at one point the number one. Sorry, the top three burger blog in the world. Right. And so I would write, you know, once or twice or three times a week, I would go and like review a burger. Right. And that website blew up. It was huge. Yeah. It got me on all kinds of TV shows. It changed my career several times over. And that was really the first, like the first piece of social media content I ever created was this blog. Right. Where I would just like talk about hamburgers. And it really, like, it really, really, really changed my life multiple times over. And what happened eventually is like, I would go and take pictures of food and I would go and post it on the blog. And then eventually like MySpace came around, I'm a little older, uh, you know, Twitter came around, Facebook came around. And so I was using, you know, I was using burgerconquest.com and I said, you know what? I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just going to move to social media. So I would use social media promote to get people to the blog, Right. And then once I got people to the blog, then I do all the other stuff, build my email list, blah, blah. Eventually, like I realized that people just didn't want to read hamburger blogs anymore. Yeah. So uh, so I started uh, I started just shifting all my content to social media. Now, I'm trying to find this post and I'm really 
struggling <laughs> to find this. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. I am going to show you guys the very first. Oh, it didn't work. I want to show you the very first post I ever put on my website. It was literally the worst. It's no longer on my website. Oh, Sorry. No. I'll find it later. I'll have find to it tell later. Tell us about it. Uh, anyway, I was going to find this picture. It was literally like the very first post I ever put on the website was the worst photo yeah. of a hamburger you've ever seen in your life. It I took it on, I took it with like a flash on an, on a Blackberry. Again, I'm a little older That's... and it was, it was washed out. It didn't look appealing at all. And I, I literally wrote the blog on my Blackberry and posted it while I was in the restaurant. So it was a little bit like being on Instagram. Yes. And that one post, that horrible, horrible photo of that terrible burger launched so many things, right? But had I never like taken that crappy picture and put it on that blog, like you and I would not be on the, having this conversation today. But isn't it, I mean, what's incredible to me is somebody that's a marketer at heart and understanding the content ecosystem that we live in is that it was even before that blog, because you, you shared the story with me, but I'd love for you to share it with our audience of, of when did you realize that social media and content was important? The internet was important to what we now call marketing, digital marketing. I don't know that there was like a single event, you know, there wasn't like one thing, but it, it, pre well, the, it sure. the band, tell me about the band. That they told, I was going to say, told, yeah, yeah. It predate it predates restaurant food, yes. all this food stuff. So I was in the music business and I owned an agency where I managed a couple bands careers, meaning I did everything, helped book their tours, got them recording contracts, you know, uh, negotiated merchandise pricing. Like I was a businessman. I did everything. Right. And I realized as like my space was really becoming a thing and Twitter was becoming a thing like, oh, my God, this there's a there. The band for the first time ever has the ability to speak directly to the fans. Right. We don't need PR. We don't need to get on TV. We don't need an article to be written. They don't need to come to the show and meet us like we literally could wake up and be like, oh, we wrote a new song in the garage day and like it's there. And I was like, this is an unbelievable opportunity to connect with people who care about your art, right? Translate that to whatever business you want. But I was like, and I literally every day I'd call the guys on tour and I'd be like, how was the show last night? Cool. Did you write your MySpace blog? And, you know, I remember saying to them, like, look, guys, you know, typically we would have to call the publicist at, at the label and like, hey, we need to write a PR thing. It would like months and weeks would go by, blah, 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 versus like in real time, you could post real to MySpace time. and talk to your fans. And that was the first time that I was like, yo, this social media stuff is the real deal. This is going to put marketing back in the hands of the person that made the thing, yes. the, the manufacturer, the server, the artist, the restaurant, the whatever. And that was really like... Like again, it wasn't one moment, but it was like that was the time at which I was like, this is real. Like this is a shift. So bring me, bring us to today, because I think, you know, so much of what we talk about on this show, when I have somebody that's a TikTok influencer or YouTuber or hospitality professional that understands content in a way that most, most hospitality professionals don't, so much of what we talk about is video. Can you talk about video and vertical video to be specific and, and how this seismic shift has happened and, and where we are in 2023 moving moving forward in, in content? Yeah, I mean, I never wanted to be, first of all, I never wanted to be a photographer. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I still don't think of myself, again, air quotes, for those of you that are, are in the audio version, photographer. Yes. But like, I've taken so many pictures of food now that like, it's just natural skill set. But I was for sure, like, not going to be a video person. I was like, I didn't want to be a photographer for the first part. And I don't want to make videos. I'd like, I'm not interested. I like doing other things. Like I definitely like doing it, but then like the TikTok thing became undeniable, like really undeniable. And, you know, as, as, a, as somebody who does marketing and tells restaurants what to do with their marketing, I was like, I got to master this. Like, I look like a fraud if I don't master this. So I embraced it. And then like, you know, the creator front with Instagram where they were paying people to post reels. And I was like, well, if you're going to pay me, like, why would I not post a reel? Yes. So, you know, I was like, I'm just going to go with it. And now, like, I literally I'll take photos because it's like a natural reaction to me. But I don't really post photos anywhere. It's yes. all video. You know what yeah. I mean? And, you know, I, you know, it's like I think with with TikTok, like there's a lot more lurkers. 
Like my wife doesn't create content, but she's on it all day long. Well, that's not true. But like she'll, you know, she'll consume 15, 20 minutes at a time. Sure. Just, you know, and and even on on Instagram, like I think people like will still post photos, like here's my kids and whatever, but like they're not posting videos, but like people are consuming videos, you know, and it's way easier. I noticed too, like in my daily life, if I have, if, if one of my clients sends me a question and like, if I was going to type it out, it would take me like 20 minutes to like bang on a keyboard. Dude, I got interviewed today. Here's a perfect one. Here's a perfect example. I got an email from Reader's Digest. Hey, we're doing a story on fast food burgers. Do you want to be featured? I'm like, heck yeah. <laughs> so they for say, anybody that's eat? listening, the answer is always yes. Yeah, you the answer is always podcast? yes. Do you want to be interviewed? Yes. The answer is yes. Yeah, yeah in More particular about that. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so I said, yes. So she emailed me the questions and I sat on the questions for five days. Cause I did, I was like, Oh, I need to dedicate an hour. Oh my God. Gun to my head. Tap, 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 tap. Wait, why is in and out the best burger? Blah, blah, yeah. blah. And I was like, no, I turned on zoom. I brought the questions in front of me. I hit record. I talked, I answered my own questions for 15 minutes. I uploaded it to temi.com. I had it transcribed for a dollar fifty. I forwarded her to the transcript and the video and said, "Good luck." Like, yep. there you go. Why would I not want to do video? One hundred percent. I think that's you know, it's such a powerful lesson for anybody that's listening is understanding. I mean, we talk about online storytelling, and online storytelling breaks down to audio, video, words, and images. The most beautiful thing about video is what Rev just told you, Rev told you that video literally takes care of all of them. You can take a still shot from a video and get your photo. You can transcribe that video and get actual words for that blog post. And you get audio, you get an audio file. Video gives you all of those things. Can you tell me about how now that you're leaning into Instagram reels and you're doing TikTok and you're producing all this content, now you are literally a walking smartphone storyteller. When you go to these trade shows, when you go and you work with restaurant owners, what do you think is preventing them from embracing video? Some some sort of like ludite belief that they can't do it. I don't know. I mean, like, look, I'll, I'll give this to you. Okay, so I do run a couple of Instagram accounts. I run one called Steak Club 7. That's the number seven. Okay. It's just steak. There's nothing else on there but bloody red meat. Okay. <laughs> and most of it is reposts of the other members of the club. Yes. Okay. But if we, as a club, if we go dine at a steakhouse and I take a bunch of video, right? The next morning, I will post a four second shot of sweeping over steak, yeah. no edits. Like no, no cuts. Yeah. So I will edit it. I'll trim it from seven seconds to sure. four, whatever, but literally like five seconds worth of editing. And those posts will get 20 or 30,000 views of just like somebody slicing a steak. And I tell the other guys in the club, like, look, I love your videos. Like I love these one minute, like, so I was at this restaurant and we ate here and blah, blah, blah. And like, I'll consume that all day. And those are great. But like, just post a four second thing of steak. Like, it crushes all of our other content. And so I tell the same thing to restaurants. Like, dude, uh, take a burger, unwrap it in a video and like choose some music and put it up. Like, they're not all going to be winners anyway. So, but it's more about consistently and showing up. So why are people not doing it? I don't know. It's way easier than you think it is. And my story about editing for an hour is only because I've chosen to complicate the process, but like, it doesn't need to be, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, when you think about the entire digital hospitality solutions that are out there, especially in the, the marketing stack of a restaurant, can you talk about how do you simplify the process as an operator? For, for video creation or just marketing? No, just for marketing specifically. We certainly don't simplify it. <laughs> we don't either. <laughs> we try to. I wish we could. We're we on the, the, the consistent, persistent pursuit of trying to find the simple solution to make this yeah. stuff easier. But I would say this. This is the, like like if I'm talking to an independent operator who's like, I got to be better about marketing. Yes. Right. And you probably hear this all the time. Like, I got to post to Instagram more. I'm like, uh. Eh. Like, if you're going to do one thing, is that really the one thing? I would yeah. say it's not. I would say the one thing, if you're going to simplify it, is collect your guest's email address and email them once every other week. Yep. The, you know, stay in the consideration set. Like, if you forget, if you're a donut shop or a coffee shop or, you know, juice, like a place that has like high frequency, like the following doesn't really apply. If you're any other restaurant, if you're a fast, casual, quick serve, fine dining, whatever, what is the frequency that people really, really dine with you? I mean, really. 
one twice time a, a year, couple months, yeah, three times maybe. a year, four times a year. Yeah. Like really, really. I mean, I would tell you we love Five Guys, but if we eat there three times a year, that's probably accurate, right? So, what are you really trying to do? You're trying to get me to go from three to four. That's it. What's the easiest way to do that? Stay top of mind with me. What's the fastest, easiest way to get your brand in front of my eyeballs? Email, right? I, I've been subscribing to Red Robin's emails for five years now. We go to Red Robin once or twice a year, but here I am mentioning Red Robin. It's yep. top of mind for me. Correct. You know what I mean? So if I was going to simplify marketing for an independent operator, it would be like collect guest emails, email them at least every 10 days. Do that. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. Tell me about how did you come up with the idea to put on the Branded Restaurant Marketing Summit? Uh, oh, man, the Branded Restaurant Marketing Summit. So for those of you that don't know what this is yet, it's an it's an online conference. Uh, it's virtual. It means you don't got to leave your house, your office, your bedroom, wherever you consume content. Right. It's all video content. It's January 25th and 26th of 2023. It's free. So register. There's 32 different speakers, including Sean here, uh, who are going to share like tips, tricks and tactics on how to up level your marketing. Right now, where did I come up with it? So, I, you know, much like you, I go to a lot of trade shows. I go to a lot of conferences. And the thing that makes me the most bananas about these things is like I leave my house. I leave my family for four or five days. I get a hotel room, an airplane, I register, I spend money on food. Like it's a couple of thousand dollars to travel yeah. somewhere else, disrupt my life. And I'm there for three or four days. And what I don't get is like tricks, tips, and tactics. Okay. Here's how to achieve X result by doing steps one, two, three. That's what I want. Yes. Okay. What I get is, oh, you need to lean into a loyalty program. Great. I could have read that headline on NRN. I didn't right. need to come to your conference for that, right? So I was like, okay, how do we put together a conference where we're literally telling people like, here's the playbook, here's the instruction man manual, here's the step-by-step -step process to achieve X. And I don't want to talk about operations. I don't want to talk about the, the labor shortage. I don't want to talk about any of the stuff that gets talked to any of the other conferences. I literally want to show you how to get and keep more guests. And I was like, nobody's doing this. Yep. Let's just let's just do it online. Let's just do it online. And I called my partners at Brandon and said, here's what I want to do. And they were like, great, create your own budget. Go for it. <laughs> and that's what it was. I mean, this year, the 2022, so it happened in January. Uh, I think we had 24 speakers uh, for the 23, 23 version. We have 32 speakers. I was bombarded with people that wanted to present. And I didn't say yes to everybody. I said no to a lot of people, but it was like, okay, if you can come on and do it trick tip or tactic, a how to, you're welcome to speak. And so I, you know, I've been watching some of the content because most of it's pre-recorded. It's pretty awesome, man. Yeah. There's really kind of no questions left unanswered from this year's event. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited to have you on to talk about it because it's a gift to our listeners. I mean, this is a free event and the people that Rev has gotten together to present. I mean, every single person, some of them I don't know, but about 90% of them I do know. So the 10% that I don't know, I can't wait to see what their content is. But even the ones that I do know, every time I see any one of these people present because they're the best of the best, they always bring their A game and they always teach me something more. I mean, you have Zach Oates, Chip Close, Kyle and Sarah, Carl Orsborn, Troy Hooper, Matt Plapp, Donald Burns, Chad Horn, Bruce Irving, Rory Balkan, <laughs> Meredith Sandlin. And that's just a small segment of the entire list. Where did you collect these people? How did you find them? How do you pre-qualify people that, because this is your name, you know, this is a branded event. This is a restaurant marketing center, but ultimately as an event organizer, as somebody that's put on barbecue festivals <laughs> my entire life, um, I know that ultimately the buck stops at me when I decide of when I'm curating this, this type of event. How did you, how did you come up with the list? Sure. Yeah. And, and, and there's also like just, you know, you talked about a lot of thought leaders and marketers and tech founders in there, but I also have like seven or eight different like restaurant people speaking. So like yep. it's, it's the, we, it's well represented across the industry, but um, you know, again, I go to these conferences and I see who's on stage and like Carl and Meredith are great. They're on stage all the time. They get up and they tell you how to do something. You know what I mean? And Zach does that. Zach will be like, here's exactly how to get your guests to give you feedback. Like, great. 
Like, so, you know, watching these people, I put together a conference of the content I want to watch, Correct. right? And I called the people that I know that are going to get on stage. Here's the problem. Most of these conferences, especially the ones that are designed for enterprise level businesses, you know, the Burger Kings and McDonald's and Ruth Chris's of the world, like the people they put on stage on those are the people that run the biggest companies. So you get like the CEO of Domino's or the CMO of, you know, whatever, this one or that one, doesn't matter. And yeah, those people probably have some pretty interesting things to tell people because, dude, you're running dominoes, like you figured something out, you know what I mean? But like, I want to be told tactfully how to make one little moment of my day different. And so I curated people that I don't care what they've achieved. I don't care what company they work for. I care like, are you going to learn something? And so I curated it from people that I know, know how to teach a tactic, right? From people that I've seen speak or people people that have had me speak or people that have had me on their podcast like you. And so these are just people I know. Like these are all people. None of these people were people I didn't know. I reached out to, I specifically curated a list of people I'm familiar with who I know can easily teach you how to accomplish something. It was, it was a lot of work, but I'm pretty excited about it. Well, it's super exciting. We'll put a link in the show notes, but it's uh, restaurantsgrow.com. Is that correct? Slash summit. Yep. Slash summit restaurants grow.com slash summit. We'll put a link in the show notes. Please register. It's a free event. I know there's a, a VIP portion as well. What 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 are that what do you get access if you sign up for the VIP? Yeah, for the for the 2022 edition, we have 1300 people register. So that's that's, that's a bigger than a lot of these conferences we attend. You know what that's, I mean? Oh, for sure. Let's at huge. least double. Yeah. It's big. So uh, if you if you sign up for the VIP All Access Pass, and thank you for bringing it up, uh, there's some immediate training. You like you log in, you can go right now, and there's training you can get right now. Uh, there's a course on reputation management, like how to resp- respond to reviews. What's the perfect review response look like? You can consume that right away. There's uh, some training in there uh, called The Science of Getting Rich. There's an amazing book that was written in the early 1900s by Wallace D. Waddles. That's a book that's guided my entire life and me and my my life coach john shaw taught a class on it because it's not written in modern vernacular it's written in like whatever they spoke in america in 1904 yep. and there's a lot of hidden like messages and secrets in the book that like people have extrapolated well we formalized that into a one-hour course so you get that for free uh and then there's something called the, the i call the social media order igniter which i think you'll love all these people that get frozen of i don't know what to post on social media we created a spreadsheet, like it'll take you 10 minutes to fill it out and you'll have 30 days worth of content in 10 minutes. And so I, I give you the, 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 the framework, how to do it and how to, so you get that stuff immediately, right away. You can start doing that today. And then the real bonus I think is that you get an additional 90 days access to the content. So if you sign up for the free version, which again, it's hundred percent free, there's no snags, there, there's no tricks. Uh, the content is live all day the 25th and all day the 26th of January, 48 hours, 32 speakers. And then when those days are done, it's gone, right? I don't think anybody's going to consume 32 hours worth of content in two days. You certainly can, right? But for 97 bucks, you get 90 days. It cost me money to like host all this with servers and click funnels and all that stuff. So I had to charge a little bit of a price, but for 97 bucks, you get 90 days access to all of that stuff. So I think it's pretty fair. Well, that's, uh, I mean, I, spoken from somebody that spoke at last year's event that attended it that listened and consumed the content it is it is beyond valuable i mean everything that for only 97 dollars, i mean it's it's absolutely incredible we hope that everybody that's listening to this show that you join us um at least the free version but definitely sign up for the vip version uh rev i do want to ask you because we talk about leadership um, you are one of the leaders that, that I look up to online and in real life. And um, I love the fact that you've been willing to be vulnerable um, as a husband, as a father, um, as somebody that's gone through weight struggles, um, as somebody myself that goes through weight struggles. You posted recently about your weight loss journey. Can you, it, it's something that is not spoken enough about in the hospitality business. Um, we are very bad at taking care of ourselves. We spend our lives taking care of others. Um, but I appreciate you and your honesty for for sharing your own personal journey. Um, can you share with the listeners uh, your weight loss journey and, and why why are you posting about it? Why are you challenging people to to also get involved? Sure, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. That's kind of you to say. Uh, you know, two two years ago was it? You know, October of 2020. Um, I fell asleep on the couch on a Sunday afternoon with my my kid on my lap, and he fell asleep. <laughs> and my wife took a picture of us. Right. Like father and son napping on the couch, totally innocent, cute. 
She sends me the photo. When I wake up, I look at it and I legit look like I have a car tire around my waist. Not like proverbially, it literally looked like a car tire. And I was like, I'm disgusted. Like, I'm disgusted that I would do this to my body. Like, this is gross. And what I really care about is like what I can do for this kid who I would do anything for and my wife who I love. You know what I mean? And I was like, how do you let yourself go like this? And I drank a ton of beer in COVID and I was fat before COVID, but I put on tons of weight and I was like, no more, we're not doing this. It's like, we're not doing this. This is a decision. Like if I can run a business, if I can maintain relationships, if I can run a house, like I can control my weight. Like, this is dumb. Why can't I do this thing and all these other things? And I just made a choice on November 4th of 2020. Uh, I was like, that's it. And I, th I think I posted on November 1st. Uh, here's this photo of me. I'm disgusted. I'm starting a weight loss journey. Does anybody want to join me? Like 20 people put their hand up and said, we'll do whatever you want. Let's go. I started a private Facebook group. We did a challenge where like every Monday and Friday you weigh in and then we rank each other based on weight loss by percentage, not by pounds. And then at the end of the week, like uh, we, we share the rankings and like, yeah, great. At the end, and then what we made everybody do, you'll love this. We made everybody put in 20 bucks, yep. okay, to participate. At the end of the month, whoever loses the most weight by percentage, half the money goes to them and the other half goes to a charity of their choice. So even if you lose, like you didn't really lose, like 20 bucks is nothing, but like kept you motivated. Yep. And we ran that for almost two years. And, you know, we had one lady lost 125 pounds. That's amazing. You know, yeah, it was um, um, like, we talk about transformation. Uh, you know, I lost 70 some, I put a few of it back on, but we've had, we had so many people lose so much weight and nobody was on the same diet. Nobody was doing the same exercise. It wasn't like we we're following some like Billy Blanks type, type of tie boat, like, Everybody did it their own way, but the key was accountability. Yes. Like this group that we had gave people the ability to be like, I want to eat cookies today and go in the Facebook group, be like, man, I am not feeling it. I want ice cream. Like, no, you got this. And then, you know, sharing cheats. Oh, did you know there's this like low calorie ice cream? And like, it's just a support group. And I, I shut that down for a while because I didn't want to do it, but I'm bringing it back in January because I need to lose. I, I put 30 pounds back on. It's not cool. Yeah. It's not cool, man. It's way too easy in this business, like you said, to get heavy. We work late nights. We we're, we don't sleep well. We, we're in the business of serving others. The food and drink is delicious. Like, you know, it, it's easy to put on weight. And I was like, I'm not going to continue to do this. I'm going to let others that want to get control of it. Let me help you. Absolutely. Well, it's uh, it's important to take care of your future self. And, you know, as somebody that is a husband and a father, those are the, the things that it it inspires me when I see someone like you having the courage to share what you're going through. Um, because it's easy when you're talking about content and putting out, it's easy to share success online. It's easy to sh share sexy steak photos. It's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard as, as, as men and as leaders to talk about the things that we struggle with. Um, so I, I definitely wanted to compliment you on that. Um, the you. other thing I wanted to do is give a shout out every single Wednesday and Friday on the app clubhouse. It's a social audio app. Um, please join us on at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we have digital hospitality leaders, smartphone storytellers, people in sales and marketing, content creators all over the globe that join us um, as a chance for you to come up on stage, share your story. Rev has been in the rooms with us. So many of the speakers that are going to be speaking at the hospitality, uh, the restaurant marketing summit. They also join us as well, but we want you to join us. Um, we like to give shout outs to people that are creating content online, especially in the hospitality space. This week's shout outs going to Mike Schatzi, Mike Schatzberg from uh, Branded for the Branded Weekend Update. So they've started to post uh, the team at Branded this branded weekend update on LinkedIn. So you guys can, uh, can follow them on LinkedIn, but it's one of my favorite pieces of hospitality content that, that is out there online. I wanted to give you Rev a chance to, to give a shout out to somebody that you're working with, um, somebody that's gone above and beyond someone that's doing something different in the, the storytelling online storytelling game. Man, I would give them the choice. Had you not picked Jimmy and Shatsy in the brand, <laughs> I would probably would have gone on that one. Cause you know, they write that for those of you that read it, you've seen it, but if you have not, it's a, it's a gigantic email that comes out gigantic. every Saturday morning. Yeah. It, like can talk about, can, you know, the key is here. We didn't talk about consistency. doesn't matter if it sucks or not, just show up. They show yeah. up. That thing is there every Saturday morning. And, you know, I have this, I write the section all the way at the bottom. So I contribute, but you know, 
that is one of my favorite ones because like you get inside Jimmy and Shatsy's head. They have some yep. interesting thoughts. They give you some market commentary. Like it's a really good way to up level that they're probably, you know, that is probably one of my favorite pieces of content. You know, I like all your stuff. I like, you know, Kyle's stuff. There's a lot of great content creators, you know, Carl and Meredith. There's so many great content creators. You know who else I really like? Yeah. Matt Plapp. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Plapp, America's best restaurants. We've had him on the show. I like Matt because here's the other thing too is is much like you, Matt makes a lot of his stuff like digestible in 30 seconds. Yes. That, that's about the level of attention span that I have <laughs> for, for that type of content. So I like, oh yeah, what's Matt talking about? I totally agree. Like, yes. like yes. but again, it's showing up and being consistent, you know, whether you like the message or not, like there's Matt Plapp every day, you know? Absolutely. It's like Lunchbox, like whether you like Lunchbox or not, whether it's, it's the technology you use or not. If you go on LinkedIn, you follow one person in that company, you follow Lunchbox, your entire LinkedIn feed is going to be Lunchbox, Lunchbox, Lunchbox. Like they get the show up game. You know what I mean? Well, that's, I mean, that I'm, I'm happy you said Lunchbox and the other, I mean, I just put a post up on LinkedIn about uh, seven shifts and ovation. And, you know, if you're not following Jordan Bosch and, and Zach Oates, both Zach Oates from ovation and Jordan Bosch. Yeah, Zach is shifts. great at this. But yeah. like, this is the stuff we talk about this to restaurant owners. We talk about this to people that are hospitality professionals, but like, don't get it mixed up that I don't say the same things to leaders and founders of publicly traded hospitality technology companies that they need to do the same things. Zach is doing these things. He's doing the things that Rev's doing. Jordan's doing the things. They're tweeting. It's not comfortable to tweet. It's not comfortable to post videos. It's not comfortable to post updates on LinkedIn. But once you do it, you learn the craft of doing it. Consistency. Over time, you get better at it and you build community. I mean, that's the way that you've got so many incredible speakers coming to this, to this marketing summit is because of consistency. If you didn't show up, if you didn't give all of the secrets from when you go to a trade show, Rev literally on LinkedIn will post <laughs> all of the things that you need to do in whatever city you're going to, the playbook of how he hacks his way through to get the most value. But he does that because it, I'm sure it's therapeutic for you, but it's also very helpful for anybody else that follows your content. Because I know if I'm going to a trade show that I haven't been to and Rev's been there, I'm just going to go and look and see what did Rev do? Because he's <laughs> going to tell me what not to do. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, God bless. I mean, there's, the, you know, here's the thing. Here's a, another great example. So this morning, wife and son come downstairs. I'm getting ready for work. You know, I got a six-year-old. They do say some pretty amazing things. And he says, he goes, hey, do you know that the three R's are reduce, reuse, recycle? I was like, yeah, totally. We should do more of that. He goes, it's also for, uh, what did he say? Respect, responsibility, and rock and roll. And I was like, it is. Heck yeah. <laughs> and I sat down on my desk and I was like, I'm totally going to use that. Yes. And tomorrow on LinkedIn, I know that this, you know, we're talking in real time here when they're recording, yep. but uh, on December 20, I, I, wrote, I literally wrote it in two minutes. Yep. I said, my son this morning said, you know, responsibility, this recycle rock and roll. And I wrote like a four and like, it's going to get a ton of engagement tomorrow. But, but like that, when you get into the mindset of making content, you see content happen around you all the time. And you're always like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a thing. That's a thing. I can worry about that. I mean, yeah, I watch you like I, you're you're your brain thinks in in snippets. It's, it's all in snip. We live, we live in micro moments. And the beautiful thing about the technology that we all have is that we can publish those micro moments if we choose. And when you do, you have no idea what piece of content is going to help somebody. You have no idea who's watching. All you need is an audience of one. You know, the fact that you're helping other people lose weight, you're helping other restaurants succeed with their marketing, retaining their guests, attracting more guests. I mean, for me, it's super exciting because I know 2023 is only going to be a place where there's going to be more attention. There's going to be more attention on what you're doing, more attention on the impact that you're making on the industry. And uh, I'm super excited for people to attend the Branded Restaurant Marketing Summit, please go to www.restaurantsgrow.com backslash summit. Sign up for the VIP package. Join us. Um, interact with Rev. Where's the best place that people can find you online? Pick your favorite social media uh, platform, and I'm probably on there as Red Ciancio. <laughs> so if you like LinkedIn, I'm there. If you like Twitter, I'm on there. If you like TikTok, I'm there. Pick, pick your favorite one. I'm at Rev Ciancio. That's the best way.
Well, we we appreciate you, Rev. Uh, an honor to have you on the show. Thank, Thank you, you guys for listening to the show. Thank you for supporting. Please subscribe. Please share it with a friend. Um, we hope to see you at the summit. And um, as always, you can find me at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. We've got a very exciting year of content coming in the books. We can't wait for you guys to level up your hospitality business, your content game, your restaurant game, and uh, we will catch you all next week. And a special thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. People like Sam, the cooking guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using Toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept, or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use, and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. I will get you the link to the right Toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show, that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about Toast, you implemented Toast, you did a Toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community. Share your Toast story with us. DM me today to learn more and be sure to check out Toast.